Welcome back to Dano Does Things. My name is Dano and thank you for coming to check out this video today. Today I'm trying a punch needle project for the very first time. You've probably seen punch needle projects before. They've been around forever, but they recently had a resurgence on YouTube and Instagram and I've been wanting to give it a try. I like to film my first time doing new things because you can get so easily fooled by social media when you see all these people who are really good at these crafts, but you know they've done it a million times, they've practiced, they have the techniques down, and so you might get unrealistic expectations of what your first project should look like. So I am here to hopefully give you an idea of how easy or hard punch needling is, if it is the craft for you, and how long it might actually take you to do a project like this. When you see 30 second clips on Instagram, it's easy to think that, you know, it'll be so fast, but I'm guessing this is gonna take a while. So this is the kit that I picked up. I got it from like a big box discount store. You can definitely get better kits off of like Etsy and things like that, but this was really cheap and I just wanted to give it a try. So if I enjoy the craft, then I will invest in some better supplies. It says it has everything I need to complete one punch needle project. So let's open it up and see what we're working with. Okay, here is the kit here. It says it has one embroidery hoop, the adjustable punch needle with threader, yarn, punch needle fabric, and instructions. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, we've got the punch needle tool here. It is adjustable um, depending on size, I guess. I need to read the instructions to figure out what these letters mean, but it seems pretty straightforward. We've got the threader here, our embroidery hoop, our fabric, uh, which is slightly different than embroidery fabric. And we have our yarn, which is actually not too bad. I was worried about the quality of the yarn, but it's not terrible. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. So we'll set the yarn aside for a second. Okay, so off the bat, it says you'll also need a water soluble fabric marker, craft glue, a hot glue gun with glue sticks and scissors. I do not have a water soluble fabric marker, but I do have craft glue and hot glue gun with glue sticks and scissors, so we're going to make do. Okay, the first step is to open up the hoop and put your fabric in, which is very similar to embroidery, so I think I've got this one. You want to center the fabric in the hoop and then place it over and then tighten your screw, adjusting as needed. Okay, now that it's in the hoop here, it says the next step is to flip this over and trim around the edges and then glue uh, these excess bits of fabric down. I'm guessing that's to help keep the tension while you needle punch. It's not my favorite technique for finishing the back of a hoop, but you know what? We're gonna stick with the rules for now and we are going to do that. Okay, so the fabric was trimmed to about one inch around and then I put a bead of hot glue on the inside of the wooden hoop and then just pressed the fabric down to secure it. The instructions then say to glue the excess fabric to the back of the hoop with craft glue, but the way I cut it allowed it to be pretty tucked in and looks fairly clean already, and there's not a lot of excess with just the hot glue, so I'll just leave it like that. The next step is to use a window or a light box and place the pattern on the back of the fabric and trace it. I'm going to go do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I ended up drawing on the back with Sharpie because it's not that sunny out today and I don't have a light box and it was very difficult to see from the other side. So I drew this on with Sharpie and you can kind of see it through the back here. We'll see if I regret it or not, but that's what we're working with for now. The next step is to thread the needle puncher. So it says to put it on C and to grab your first color of yarn. I'm gonna do sort of the outline bit first, so we're gonna go with this white yarn. 
All right, so we have our end of the yarn here and it says to take the needle threader and thread it through the hollow end all the way through the two. So it's come out there and then we thread the yarn through this piece of metal, which is very hard to do open. <sighs> okay, I finally got that. And now we pull this back through here. I think, maybe I did it upside down. I did it upside down. Okay, <laughs> reverse, reverse, reverse. Okay, and now we just have to thread this little hole here. So it says to insert it from the flat side, which I'm hoping is this side. And we'll just do that. Okay, so the instructions say to hold it like a pencil and that the beveled edge is going to be pointed upward. We're gonna have about a two inch long tail. And then we're just going to start punching. So I'm gonna do this outline first. And the first stitch, it says to just insert your needle as far as it can go. And then you want to pull this first thread through. So you have a little tail there. Now we're gonna pull this out and we're not going to pull too much. We're just gonna move about a quarter inch to the side and insert again. And oh, pulled it a little farther. So it's gonna be a really weird stitch. Okay, it's definitely hard to get this tension, right? Because you want to not pull it out. You need some force to pull it from the other side, but you also don't wanna pull it because then you get these kind of skipped looking stitches. It's okay, we're gonna learn. So it says as well to move the project, not the, not the needle, because you always want the beveled side facing up. So we're just gonna go around and around and start punch needling. I'm gonna, oh, see I pulled it out again. It's gonna be a weird, weird stitch again, but that's okay. We are learning. So I think that's gonna be the hardest part of it is keeping tension. So when you get to this point, you really wanna pull it sort of all the way out, but you can't, you gotta just let the tip come out and then move it slightly and then insert it back through. Okay, I'm just going to keep punch needling. It actually doesn't feel too bad once you get a rhythm going down here. It feels like this could go fairly fast once you get the tech. Oh, uh oh. Let's see if I can just, nope. Okay, so <laughs> my stitches pulled out and I'm not sure why. And the instructions do not tell me uh, what to do. So I'm just gonna skip back a little bit and pull and hopefully that will, nope. Okay, so this is something that I'm sure I could look up, but we're just gonna end up with a really long, wonky stitch. Oh God, none of it's going in. Let's see, let's see what we can do. What if I, hmm. Okay, so my instructions don't tell me what to do if something like this happens. Let's see if I just pull this through a bit more because I think it needs the tension of the fabric to hold the stitch in but now that I've accidentally put some stitches in there it wasn't holding it okay okay it's doing we're back we're back we just need to be you kind of need to be really gentle oh see I did it again you got to be really really gentle when you're pulling the stitches out you really can't pull your needle outward. You have to 
be quite gentle. And I think I got into a bit of a rhythm and I wasn't being as gentle. So, oh, see, I did it again. Okay. Oh God, okay. This is gonna be a bit of a struggle. I'm going to keep trying this and probably keep messing up, but I'm gonna put on a podcast and start doing what I can and I will check back in. Okay, I have been punch needling for about 25 minutes and I've got this much of it done. I'm filling in the background section so then I can come in with the color and just fill that in afterwards. Obviously it is not perfect. Um, there's definitely some gaps, some places where uh, things went really wrong, but the back looks pretty cool. Not gonna lie. But I am going to finish this up I will let you know how long it took me and I will come back with the results. So I'll be right back. Okay, it is now six o'clock, so this took me two and a half hours to complete. Obviously, there are some flaws in here, but let me talk about a punch needle in general. So I found that the times when my when my punch needle wasn't going through and wasn't catching like how it did here, there were a few things that solved that problem. Either I hadn't pushed the needle in far enough, you really want to push it so that the needle goes all the way up to here because you need to be able to have it far enough to make a loop. If you don't push it in all the way, then it sort of is very shallow the loop and it'll pull right out. Uh, another reason would be if I, instead of dragging it across, would pull up and that would pull the loop behind it as well. That would happen uh, fairly often. Or if the yarn that was coming in from this end was tangled somewhere over here and it wasn't pulling through properly, it wasn't coming through smoothly, then I would also tend to skip skip a loop or two and I would have to pull the yarn so that it could go freely in, to be able to go again. Now for this project specifically, I think I should have done the outline first and then done the color because now the outline is really in your face and the colors are a bit lost. I think that is what they did in this one, but. It, didn't show that in the instructions, so, but that's okay. So let's see, punch needle in general, it's not too difficult. Obviously getting the tension and the spacing right is going to take time and practice to get the technique down. But I think if I did something more simple, just tried to do some practice back and forth stitches, 
then I would make it look a lot nicer. Additionally, I think I need to think a little more about where I'm filling in so that the stitches are either all going the same way or all tracing. It's just something to think about. Obviously a lot of crafts start simple, but if you wanna get good at them, you have to sort of think about all these other little problems and techniques and ways to make it a little bit better. So in general, I'm gonna say I'm probably going to try punch needle again. I actually have a ton of this yarn left over. They gave me quite a bit. So I might try to do another, some practice with that and see what happens. But I would say if you are a crafty person, you definitely can get this done. If you're not crafty, I think it's worth trying. Um, it's easier than needle felt and embroidery, I would say, because you're just following the pattern, but it's not without its difficulties. And of course it is somewhat time consuming. It took me two and a half ish hours to get this done, uh, which is, it's not a big piece. So I, but that's much faster than say embroidery would take because the yarn is much bigger and you also don't have to be tying off knots all the time. I did like that if you weren't changing colors, you didn't have to rethread the punch needle unless of course, it came out, which it did come for uh, a few times for me, but that's all right as well. Uh, so overall, I would say difficulty level is maybe a six out of 10. It's not complicated, but it definitely takes some technique and some thinking about to get right. I highly recommend it if you wanna give it a try. Uh, I would maybe say get a slightly better quality needle. Mine's already slightly bending at the tip which I don't think is great. You want it to be nice and sharp so it can go through the fabric. But that being said, this was a great sort of first go at punch needle. And I hope that you give it a try yourself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see me test more things, please subscribe and leave a comment with what you wanna test in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.